Hi, good afternoon. It's a week since the 9th edition NRP update has been released. And uh, obviously, uh, if you are into shares and stocks, I would suggest that you invest in the company that uh, makes Leringer Musk Airways. Just kidding, I'm not good at stocks, but uh, a few important changes which I will be summarizing with some uh, uh, screen recording. But in terms of uh, the impact, I mean, it has become more practical, more pragmatic. Not a huge change, to be honest, so you don't need to worry if you're thorough with the NRP8, uh, not much to change. So essentially, in the algorithm, we have uh, the uh, stress on suction has been removed in the initial steps. The uh, focus on delayed cord clamping, it's expanded. So we have uh, the time uh, specification of 60 seconds rather than 30 to 60 seconds, which is much better. And in terms of uh, the uh, cord milking versus delayed cord clamping, previously it was just said that don't do below 28 weeks, but now they have expanded it to say 35 weeks and above, you can consider uh, cord milking if cord clamping is not possible uh, due to whatever situation, maybe baby is not in a good condition and needs resuscitation. And uh, 28 to 34 weeks, it's not recommended, but you can do it. Uh, there is no clear evidence either way. Below 28 weeks, you shouldn't do it because of the increased risk of IVH. And the third change in the algorithm is basically the one minute uh, cutoff for oxygen uh, saturation has been removed. So it starts from two minutes at 65 to 70 percent, which again is a practical change because uh, very rare to have the pulse oximeter on the baby and reading uh, the saturation by one minute of age. So these are the main changes in terms of the algorithm. Uh, there are uh, other changes. Uh, I mentioned the uh, uh, caught clamping update that uh, duration as well as the uh, uh, the uh, the time time duration of 60 seconds plus the gestation based approach to cord milking then we have uh, some impact on the laryngeal mask airway so it can be used as a primary modality of uh, ventilation either mask ventilation or the laryngeal mask airway not necessarily as an advanced airway we have some uh, pragmatization of the approach in terms of uh, the MR SOPA. So if you, you don't have to go step by step, one step at a time, you can decide, suppose the baby needs suction, you go straight for suction. If you think uh, the baby is in a very poor condition, uh, you can go straight for intubation and so on. The time taken to assess the effectiveness of uh, the ventilation has been extended from 15 to uh, 15 seconds to 15 to 30 seconds as a range. This again is a pragmatic approach. The ventilation rate has been changed from 40 to 60 which is a narrow range to 30 to 60 which is more practical because you would fluctuate in the cadence sometimes and you don't want people stressing on this 15 to 30 second window or 30 to 60 breaths so it gives you more flexibility and the same with the MR SOPA step suppose there's a strict uh, uh, supervisor who keeps pushing you to stick to the NRP for minor deviations it doesn't happen anymore so you, you can be more pragmatic in your approach I think this is a welcome change overall uh, I think uh, it's uh, quite positive, the ET tube size change, I'm not sure uh, if it's a big difference because they've changed the range. They have included the 22 to 25 weeks and below 800 gram, uh, giving the option to use a two size or a 2.5 in them. And uh, from 800 gram, it goes to 1.2 kilo with the 2.5 size tube. And uh, we, we have the range of 1200 to uh, 2200 grams instead of uh, 1000 to the 2000 grams. So that's a three size tube. and. 2200 gram and above you can consider 3.5 size so essentially uh, these changes are summarized in the next uh, few minutes uh, of the screen recording that i'll share in terms of the algorithm there are three important changes the stress on suction has been removed uh, so you can clear airway if needed but the word suction has been removed the cord clamping uh, decision making we'll discuss in detail next that has been expanded and in terms of the chart for the oxygen saturation the saturation at one minute was removed because it's very unlikely that you would have the pulse oximeter connected and reading before the two minutes of age. And in practical terms, you would have just started the resuscitation process. So you start looking at the oxygenation after that. So in terms of delayed cord clamping, the eighth edition said uh, 30 to 60 seconds in vigorous term babies. But the ninth edition has been improved. Uh, it's more consistent with the World Health Organization and other guidelines. And uh, it's suggested to wait for 60 seconds in the vigorous babies. Uh, in the babies who are not active, the cord clamping guidelines has been revised again. In the previous guideline, it just said you know, cord milking is not recommended less than 28 weeks. But now there is more clarity. Between 35 and 42 weeks gestation in the babies who are not suitable for uh, delayed cord clamping, 
cod milking is a suitable alternative and uh, for non vigorous premature babies at 28 to 34 weeks there is not enough evidence but you could consider cod milking is an option but under 28 weeks because of the increased risk of ivh delayed uh, cod clamping cannot be done then cod milking cannot be recommended in terms of the oxygen concentration that we start obviously there is more evidence coming in as well so previously we used to say more than 35 weeks 21% and less than 35 weeks 21 to 30% so the choice was left open but now we have a more clarity from the 9th edition so more than or equal to 35 weeks you start in room air as we currently do and in the premature babies we have two subgroups 32 to 34 weeks you start between 21 to 30% so you can choose if the baby needs resuscitation you could go with 30% as well and in the babies less than 32 weeks we aim for more than or equal to 30% and this number is likely to change to a higher figure as more results are awaited so there is more focus there was a recent meta analysis as you remember that showed Uh, almost uh, 90 to 100% oxygen is better for the small babies in reaching the heart rate faster and a better outcome so that's something to look at in terms of the ventilation rate this is more uh, a when mean, practical change previously we used to say 40 to 60 breaths per minute and uh, we do have the rhythm that we use for the uh, resuscitation and if someone is closely monitoring they may correct you but in real terms uh, 30 to 60 breaths per minute is a change in the current edition which gives more flexibility and you also avoid uh, co2 wash out with the faster respiratory rate if that is a case so uh, it doesn't change much in terms of what you practically do but if someone is rigorously monitoring in your unit counting exactly and feeding back then that can reduce uh, in terms of the initial peak inflation pressure the range of 20 to 25 was given and we used to say start for premature babies uh, less than 32 weeks at 20 and for the bigger babies at 25 but now the suggestion is to start directly with 25 for both preterm and term babies but the range being 20 to 25 for babies less than 32 weeks so you wouldn't increase more than 25 in a premature baby less than 32 weeks while in a bigger baby more than 32 weeks uh, you would go for 25 to 30 cm water there is also a little more uh, pragmatic change in ventilation corrective steps so uh, it was felt that the first 15 seconds of observation and then go to the next step uh, was not adequate so they made it 15 to 30 seconds so once you do the ventilation corrective measure or the ppv you assess for 15 to 30 seconds of uh, starting ventilation to observe chest movement and uh, heart rate improvement before you go for further steps and uh, based on the assessment uh, that you uh, feel you can go for the step that you think is more suitable in practical terms uh, i mean at least in my unit we didn't apply the mr sopa in a rigid way so when i taught nrp as well i used to say uh, the similar to what the ninth edition says but the new clarification is probably to just again uh, remove the pressure on the people who are monitoring or feeding back that you didn't follow mr sopa in a st- dogmatic way so that uh, pragmatism comes in and you uh, r- r- look at the situation and you manage accordingly so this is not a big change but it just clarifies for the people who are supervising or educating that uh, you look at the situation and then use the steps that you think will be most suitable the 15 to 30 seconds uh, change is mainly to avoid unnecessary intervention like using an additional airway uh, or increasing pressure quickly enough in terms of the endotracheal tube size they had uh, studies radiologic as well as autopsy based uh, studies which showed that the tube size could fit uh, the 1.800 to 1.2 kilos for 2.5 size 1200 to 2200 grams so 29 to 34 weeks three size and more than 34 weeks 3.5 so here the gestation range uh, is almost the same except that we brought in the extreme premature babies and a suggestion that a 2 mm et tube could be used in the small babies if 2.5 was not possible to intubate so the range has changed both for the weight and the gestation so we have 22 to 25 weeks less than 800 grams 2.5 size 800 to 1200 grams 26 to 28 weeks 2.5 as well but in the first group we have two sizes as a consideration uh, in the bigger babies avoid the two size because we invariably find it difficult to fix it and there is always a difficulty in ventilating and you can't use the volume guaranteed modes very well with that uh, and the 1200 to 2200 range 29 to 34 weeks three size Uh, more than 2.2 kilo more than 34 weeks 3.5 size of course you should not hesitate to go down a size if intubation is difficult there is a change in the way the endotracheal tube depth is uh, measured when you fix it uh, to have a more consistent approach in case the lips are pulled by the tape or something like that so instead of saying uh, the insertion depth adjacent to the baby's lips we now uh, say adjacent to the anterior edge of the baby's upper gum in the midline 
So this is a rigid point, so a fixed point, it's not likely to be altered by pressure or tapes. So that makes sense to do that. So we need to get used to whether there is a 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeter difference. And uh, when we uh, start fixing, we will know that better. So um, I hope you found uh, this uh, video useful. It's a short summary and uh, do share with colleagues. Thank you.